Um, okay. Oh, we're out of chairs here. <laughs> all right, well, good morning again to you. Thank you all for waiting. Hopefully, Dr. Bob had entertaining stories for you. Did he? Yes. yes sir. I'd like to introduce you today to um, Dr. Sang C. Su from Texas A&M Commerce. Dr. Su has a PhD in computer science from Southern Methodist University. Who we have someone from Southern Methodist University, Dr. Krakow, coming next week. Yes. So, I'm one of his colleagues there. He also has a master's in computer science from the University of Hawaii. So, aloha. aloha. <laughs> <laughs> and he's interested in all kinds of um, interesting applications of computer science to things like intelligent systems, robotics. You guys know a little bit about robotics here, right? And other areas of engineering. So let's give him a, a warm welcome. Yeah. Uh, sorry for being too late, uh, guys. Um, and uh, it was a long drive, like two hours. And uh, we initially expected it's going to be just 90 minutes drive, but uh, sorry, it's uh, all out for. Uh, my name is uh, Tonan Lee, and I'm here with uh, uh, some three other professors, Dr. Gang, and as uh, he Dr. Su. Dr. Shirakoki is now parking, finding parking spots. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as introduced, we are from uh, Texas a and University of Commerce. Uh, we are from Computer Science Department, and uh, we are really excited to be here today, at a beautiful day. So, uh, I'm going to cover the first half of uh, this uh, presentation. I'm going to cover some of the research topics, interesting research topics going on in our department. And then uh, Dr. Gang will take over, and then he's going to... Uh, introduce his own uh, research interests and teaching interests. Um, we are having, this is now, we now have uh, 15 uh, faculty members now uh, on board, and uh, this is uh, just uh, some of research areas. I'm personally teaching in the graduate school, Big Data Computing and Analytics, where students will learn how to use Apache Spark platform. Now, Apache Spark platform is uh, based on the, uh, initially Yahoo's MapReduce uh, framework, and um, students will learn how to analyze big data very efficiently. Personally, now I'm working on this data compression field, and I'm going to introduce my research shortly. And uh, we are, our faculties are working on uh, ranging from natural language processing and also image analysis and recognition, which should be uh, addressed today by Dr. Zirako, who is now quite a parking spot. And uh, some of our faculty members are working on cybersecurity areas and uh, cloud computing and distributed computing systems and also internal computing. I'll get to some of these uh, points. So, uh, once again, my name is uh, Dong Wen Lee and uh, I'm really interested in data compression. And uh, if you think about data compression, um, why, why do we need data compression in, 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 uh, in this computing world? Because um, we have, we have to manage somehow all of the data coming from our uh, varying sources. So simply there's too much uh, data to store and process. Especially if you think about the uh, recent development of a CPU speed and uh, we still have uh, some speed gap or discrepancy between the CPU speed and the secondary storage. Hard disk, whether it is, a well SSD is a faster than a hard disk, but uh, still there's a lot of speed gap uh, between secondary storage and CPU. So in order to address this gap, uh, people are still using data compression a lot. So you can break down the uh, entire category of data compression in two different categories. We have lossless compression here. You, you might be all familiar with the zip and 7-zip and PNG. Those files are lossless compressions. And the lossy, uh, we also have lossy compression, uh, which you can see MP3 and JPEG and all H.264, H.265. Those video coding technologies are based on uh, can be categorized into lossy coding. <coughs> now, there's a pros and cons of each each, uh, each type of data compression. Lossless compression guarantees a high resolution in the means that the data remains intact even after you encode and decode data. There's a no loss of information. But uh, there's cons. Uh, Compression-wise, it shows a low performance. This low uh, compression performance is uh, quite low compared to lossy compression. What about lossy compression? Now, it's vice versa. Lossy compression guarantees a high performance. It means that you can reduce your, your data file size really, really, uh, really in compact form. But at the same time, 
this is uh, based on lossy compression. Uh, it's in inevitable to <coughs> lose some kind of information. When you first uh, encode data using any loss uh, <coughs> compression format, and you decode it to reconstruct data, uh, you lose some of the information because it's lossy compression. So my uh, research started from this question. Can you not have best of these both words? So uh, I think that you know, last year, uh, uh, I, uh, we, me and my colleagues uh, introduced uh, some of the research, uh, some of the results <coughs> that can, that I believe we are addressing somehow both of these, uh, uh, both of advantages. So that was the motivation for uh, my, uh, uh, my software called Ideal Lamb. This is a data compression algorithm I introduced last year. And uh, this is based on very simple idea. If we are, I'm showing you in the, in the left, right hand side, this is a toy example of, uh, I think this is 64 different data samples over time. You can, it has some value here. Once again, this is a toy example and generated from some artificial data. And if you have this one dimensional time series data, you can break down the 64 samples in, into uh, some fixed style data blocks. For instance, here uh, it shows this data was having uh, had uh, uh, only 16 samples. So we can break down this into four different groups. And the main idea is that you can encode only similar blocks as their twins. And the here the important thing is that compared with the other conventional compression algorithm, this similarity is based on some statistical similarity for KS test rather than typical Euclidean L2 distance. So that's the main difference between our research and the other other people's research. So if you look at this four different data blocks, you can easily notice that first and second and fourth blocks are very similar. So visually, you can visually tell they are very similar. Well, technically speaking, they are very similar in terms of a statistical similarity. But third block is uh, uh, quite different from, uh, different in looking from other three data blocks. So what we do here is that you, you can you just encode the first block as is. You store this into the encode story, encoded stream. Then second, second block is similar. You, can, you do not have to store entire data of second block. Uh, instead, you can, only, uh, you can only store some index that refers back to the first index of the uh, first block. Third block, since third block is uh, dissimilar from uh, previous two blocks, so you have to store third block as is. First block uh, is uh, similar to first and second one, so you can see, uh, store first block with reference to first block. As you can see, we are only, here we are only storing first and third blocks. So 16, 16 samples here, 16 samples here, but the second block and first block can be represented uh, with respect to the first block. So you can only store an uh, index. And this index is typically very small compared to its size. This, this index is only one byte, whereas this index is, uh, uh, the, the size of this each data block is, uh, since we have 16 samples for each block, 16 times the uh, floating point data size, we are using double, double precision uh, floating point here, so it's going to be 8 times 16, 128 bytes, 1 byte, 128 bytes, and 1 byte. Now we're going to understand what's going on here. We are compressing this entire four data block into two. Now, if you expand this idea into a, a real world data block, which is really large, and we can see a lot of similarity, we can get uh, we can leverage a lot of uh, compression. So this main idea, and it's very simple. What's, uh, what's if it, what our research is different from uh, uh, conventional data compression is that this similarity is measured using KS test, which is a, a very popular statistical test. We are not comparing each data sample with the other data sample using uh, L2 distance or Euclidean distance. So this method was found to be very effective uh, in terms of compression performance. And we were very excited in the last year when we first discovered this. So there are three key parameters, and uh, you can actually optimize those parameters. Now the question is that we have three threshold, uh, we have three different parameters. The first one is a uh, block length. Block length determines how many samples can be uh, stored into uh, each data block. It means that you can increase this block length or you can reduce block. If you reduce block length, you're going to break down this entire stream into uh, more blocks. 
Whereas if you uh, increase the block length, then you can you divide this uh, entire stream into a uh, uh, few fewer blocks. So uh, from what we have experienced, there's uh, some some interesting relationship with uh, this block length. Block length and uh, using this block length, there's an interesting relationship between block length and compression performance. So now I'm working with one of my graduate students, and uh, we're going to publish the paper soon. So how to optimize this block length? We want to determine the best possible block length that can guarantee the best compression performance here. So I work, I'm working on how to tune, how to optimize block length. And uh, we also have two other parameters, KS test threshold. So how similar is similar? You can actually uh, lower or you, you can actually increase or decrease the, the bar for similarity level. So lastly, we have a number of buffers, you can have uh, as many buffers, you can retain <coughs> many buffers in memory, or you can have a uh, smaller, uh, fewer buffers in memory. So yeah, so I want to show you some, some initial result. So compression ratio is normally defined by this metric. You divide original size by compressed size. So higher compression ratio means that you can actually compress a lot. So your uh, encoded data stream size is really small compared to the original size. So higher, the better. Let's see. The first graph is the original data, and the uh, second one is uh, compressed by uh, currently, currently state-of-the-art compressor called the ZFP, which is uh, targeted for compressing floating point data, a uh, floating point data like we, we do. But as you can see, its compression ratio is 13. Our algorithm was able to produce compression ratio of different order. You see this is different order. This is compression ratio 100, more than 100, whereas uh, ZFP plus state of the art remains at uh, compression ratio 13. More interestingly, if you, if you compare this graph with this original data, this is actually reconstructed data set. Once you encode your compress, uh, once you encode your data, you have compressed version. Now you feed this the compressed data to decoder to decode to reconstruct back the original data. But like I said, since this is CF also CF CF both CF and ideal ideal length compression I was based on the ideal lossy compression, uh, we can we lose some some somehow some information compared with the original data. But you can see even after uh, decoding, even after reconstruction, the quality of this curve is uh, very, very high compared to the reconstruction quality of ZFP. You can see all the important peaks and valleys remain in here. Whereas ZFP, since it is a lossy <laughs> compression algorithm, we inevitably lose some kind of information. As you can identify here, you see many uh, white bands here. The white bands means that uh, loss of information due to some quantization effect. So I want to show you some more results. The, the left-hand side is the result of GFP. Uh, right-hand side is the result of our compression algorithm called the ideal lamp. And um, for compression ratio 13, GFP has this result. <coughs> I'm going to show you everything in one shot. So with the same compression ratio, ratio 13, Ideal lamp shows a very good result, whereas uh, ZFP, as we increase compression ratio, as we tune the parameters, you lose more and more information. So at this point, compression ratio 21, uh, it barely has any information at all. Okay? Most of the information disappeared, as you can see in this uh, white blank space. But even at the compression ratio 107, Ideal lamp, our algorithm can, uh, uh, can keep the most important information. So, yeah, as you can see, peak and valleys still remain there. So that was my research. Okay. Now, uh, let me move on to uh, other pro some, some other papers in universal research. We have uh, Dr. Derek Carter, and uh, I'm not sure if you, anyone has, uh, has watched this uh, Apple's keynote presentation the day before yesterday. They introduced iPhone 10, right? What do you think is the key technology of, the, uh, of iPhone 10? I believe the key technology they are now trying to move from touch ID to face recognition and face ID. Dr. Siakov here is also seriously working on this image analysis and recognition. He's going to introduce his research soon. 
but uh, Dr. Bear Potter, he's uh, actually, he has been involved in AI and machine learning research, especially, he has been working in this uh, neural network and deep learning technology. This Apple Space ID, this technology is basically based on convolutional neural network. And uh, by neural network, uh, see, uh, because it's limited time, I cannot introduce everything, but uh, this is uh, how you can represent original da data and uh, feed this into to your uh, neural network to train this image data model into neural network <coughs> using a lot of convolutional layers and a value, <coughs> rectified linear unit, okay, this is technical term, and uh, after that, this neural network algorithm can distinguish whether this uh, original picture is a car or a truck or airplane ship or a horse. So yeah, that's the neural network research and uh, Dr. Hara is uh, working on this, uh, this research. Also, this is inception model is a similar thing. And uh, this, uh, this picture is uh, showing uh, his, uh, his research group. He's also involved in uh, computational science and high performance computing. So uh, he actually teaches uh, both of the subjects in graduate class. If you expand this idea of neural network, and, uh, you, know, you can also apply this neural network and machine learning technology to robotics, where the ro robots can always learn the features and uh, do some action uh, in the surrounding environment. So uh, we have a lot of, uh, he has a lot of interesting students project and teaching going on in neural network for autonomous driving, which is related, closely related to robot research. And also he's, uh, he does some, some research, he overlaps with mine, but the data analytics and big data. And also he, uh, he, he is involved in game controlling, reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning and game controlling, this is also very uh, close subject to uh, uh, robotics research where uh, some robot agent can automatically learn from surrounding environment and do some, uh, do some action back to surrounding environment. We have uh, another uh, faculty member called uh, Dr. Yue Hua Wang. Uh, we call her Jessica. She was uh, hired at the same time. I was uh, hired at the last year, and uh, uh, she's my colleague. And uh, she, her, she's teaching uh, mobile phone Application programming, so uh, this is too generic. So, uh, she's te teaching in graduate school and uh, undergraduate course how to design and how to implement uh, some uh, iOS apps and uh, Android apps. So, for some, in for instance, we you can see some camera applications. You know, this is camera based app. You know, you can learn all of these things uh, by uh, by taking a course. Also, database context app, menu based app. These are really popular, and the industry is booming uh, in this uh, in this app development field. Also, this is a, a location based app. Uh, the first one is touch based game, and the second one is the map based app. She is uh, teaching this subject. As for research, uh, she is uh, actively involved in uh, vehicular area network. So. If you think about the communication and networking, uh, uh, networking between uh, mobile entities, okay? Normally, network uh, network research was considered that there's some some communication network thing going on uh, in this, during static uh, among static entities. But if you think about this moving object like vehicle or cars, okay, this network and communication issues become more complicated. She's a uh, her research, so her research area is, uh, the, is called the vehicle, vehicle area network research. And uh, using all of this information, surrounding information around car, you can make a uh, car driving uh, more safe. So it's, this is somehow, uh, uh, somehow uh, related to uh, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning research, but uh, she's more focused on uh, the, the networking aspect between different cars. So in these cases, these cars can signal each other to make an uh, entire driving experience more uh, more secure and more, much more safe. So collision prediction and safe, emergency stop, all of these things can be done by uh, computer vision tech, computer vision and AI, but at the same time, you can leverage some, some factor of that these cars can communicate each other. So, you know, the, uh, the, the Ford car, this, can, uh, this is signal of the, the trailing cars that, you know, this is going to stop soon. So. You, know, you can coordinate this behavior using uh, all of this uh, uh, technology. 
And uh, she's also interested in the resource abstraction and virtualization. And uh, if you think about this cloud computing environment, there are a lot of machines. So how to effectively utilize those machines and how not to waste resources is a very important topic these days. So you may have, ever, you may have heard about a virtual machine, and I think that some of you are already using this virtual machine, like VMware, and we have a lot of software in order to, to uh, install multiple operating systems on the same machine. Well, these things become more, much more important, important, like I said, in the com cloud computing setup, because there are a lot of computers. And you want to utilize all of these computers at the same time in a very effective manner. You don't want to waste these uh, precious resources. So without virtual machine, normally single OS only owns all hardware resources, whereas uh, in the, this setup, if you add one more layer called the virtual machine layer, then multiple OSs can share uh, their hardware resources effectively. So she's also involved in uh, this kind of research. So pervasive sensing and cloud computing, and instead of uh, this resource abstraction and virtualization, it's really, really important. Now, finally, uh, let me introduce another faculty member's work. Um, this is Dr. Gino Kim, and um, he is working in the area of uh, <coughs> cybersecurity and network security. You can actually take uh, his courses geared uh, toward the cybersecurity and network security. And uh, he's interested in this kind of topic, network traffic analysis. If you think about the route, all the different routers and uh, what kind of information is going on inside and in and out of this router, he's trying to analyze uh, this kind of network traffic. So network traffic can be uh, considered as the data moving through a computer network. What's essential for those network monitoring? There are a couple of aspects. And the change detection is like uh, what's new inside this, uh, in, in this uh, input data. Now, anomaly detection is that you want to find something abnormal behavior going on in current traffic so that uh, you, can, you can stop the, stop the attack of uh, some hacker, something like that. And performance forecasting, traffic classification, and network port identification, all of these uh, application reports into the research area of network traffic analysis. So anomaly detection could be uh, I'm showing you some example here. Um, the first example, the second example, third example, this is x-axis timeline. And if you draw this network data somehow, and if you plot it somehow, then you can find some, some suspicious activities here. <coughs> second here, there's a, some, some spike here. And in the first graph, that uh, red circled part looks different from the other part. Okay? As you can see, this, this is different from the other part. So, this kind of research is also very closely connected to uh, data mining and the machine learning. Because in order to class or correctly classify these different sections, you should rely on some advanced technology like machine, machine learning is now booming these days. So uh, his research is also be benefiting a lot from uh, those kind of machine learning and data mining research. This is anomaly detection. And traffic classification, this is very interesting there because by just looking at this diagram and the uh, network pattern, you want to predict what application is actually now using uh, this network. So you can classify uh, using a lot of, uh, using machine learning technique. You can uh, use a classification engine. You can classify by just looking at input data in the network pattern. You can see uh, which kind of uh, application is going over this network. So some of them can be treated as attack. Whereas this is a normal application. Well, it looks like you know by uh, analyzing this traffic, all this is a chatting application. This is for P2P games and UDP and DNS application. I guess using all of these classification techniques. Change detection is that in the one-dimensional time series data, sometimes you want to detect some. Um, well, this is a very closely related to anomaly detection, but uh, in anomaly detection, we want to detect some suspicious and abnormal behavior. Whereas change detection, uh, we want to see, uh, we want to discover when uh, this is some kind of a new thing, interesting things happening. So, I'm not sure if you can, if you can tell the difference, but between, but uh, depend, uh, well, according to this uh, classification engine, it detected this period is different from this period. Okay. Something interesting going on okay, in this network data. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so this is a classification and uh, this is a, a, a classification thing and uh, 
all of these, uh, okay? So multivariate analysis, all of the clustering and classification uh, are in the research area. Okay, I'm now going to introduce Dr. Gang for his uh, game development research. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Lee. I'm not going to be long. Um, Sorry about that. I'm really happy to be here. How is everybody doing today? Yeah, so um, the question that you're probably thinking right now is why are these guys here? Uh, you know, obviously, we want to be knowledge, we want to you know what's happening at the end of, the end of commerce. But, you know, the, the, the interest for us really is for you to come to end of commerce. And then when you come, what do you learn? Uh, my colleague has done a very good job laying out the research and those, you know, those that you will be getting when you get to college there. Uh, but what I want to share is what classes are available. Obviously, the research is important. Uh, he laid out most of what we do. I'm, I'm you know, mostly uh, interested in cybersecurity, uh, ransomware algorithm. Uh, I'm also doing some work on uh, big data uh, with, you know, with relation to securing big data. So these are the big topics that we are interested in. And as a student, we hope that you will be also interested in learning about these topics. So why, you know, why, why are these topics important? I was listening to a speaker about four years ago. You know, he said from the beginning of time, uh, when we talk about big data, from the beginning of time until 2014, uh, the, you know, the amount of data that man has used is equivalent to the amount of data that we created between 2000 2014 and 2015. So you can kind of see right now uh, the need for people uh, who have expertise in the big data area. So if you come to Annum Commons, we have at least two or three people that are working on big data, myself included. And cyber security is also an open area. You all hear about the hacking and uh, you know, the election influence and so forth. Those, those areas are, are, are very important uh, in terms of what you want to do when you graduate, do you want to, what do you want to come uh, from that research. So those those are those are the reasons why we get this idea to you. At AM Commerce, we have all the class that you can think of. We have AI, we have games, uh, programming. So I'm teaching games programming. I'm just going to make a few, you know, a few comments about that <coughs> class, and then I'll uh, welcome my colleague. Uh, we all play games at some point. Uh, you know, whether you do it for fun or you you know, do it either as a hobby or you develop games. We you, you know we know it's, uh, this is a big area, and so when you come, we do design. And then we do develop. So I hope uh, that you you have interest in in, in this in these areas, and that when you you, you know you can come in and, and allow us to share uh, what what uh, what we know uh, with you. you know, if you decide uh, to go to graduate school, or you just want to go to work, you know when you finish college. So we are you know happy to be here. We <coughs> hope that you consider coming to NM Commerce. Uh, 15 faculty uh, is 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 a big group. So anything that you can think of, even if we don't offer it, you know, if we have enough interest, we can you know we can make arrangement for you know for for any particular uh, topic we talk. So I want to thank you. Um, uh, you know, with the interest of time, I'm going to welcome my colleague, uh, uh, Dr. Nikolai, to you know, say a few words about it. Thank you. Third one to, to speak. Uh, my name is uh, Bill. Uh, now, uh, if you yeah, if you didn't understand why we are here, I'll tell you. Uh, this is to tell. Uh, I think you are an undergraduate student, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So at a certain point, you will be thinking about graduate school. Some of you, huh? Okay. So we are here to tell you. Come to us. <laughs> uh, Why well, this is important, I, I'll speak on behalf of myself. Uh, here is one of my research. Uh, there is no time to explain the research. I just will tell you. But what I'll tell you is the following. Uh, if you come there, uh, you, okay, you will improve your qualification, your experience, your background knowledge. Uh, I'm sharing position between math and computer science, and this is an uh, interdisciplinary thing. Uh, now, uh, this is a fashion. Uh, uh, okay, uh, 
to tell you why I'm saying from there, it's because uh, my students always will find a good job or a top school. Now, a student of mine who graduated this year uh, it was, I, I cannot say awarded or granted, but she was, uh, uh, she, she, she was, she, she applied to the uh, University of Arlington, applied mathematics. She was ranked number one among all PhD candidates. Uh, she did the research with me. Uh, UT Arlington is a top university. Uh, she will do PhD in applied mathematics. Uh, another, one, another one got uh, this in uh, into uh, North Texas. Blue, I think it's North Texas, right? Uh, I have students who got a good, okay, these are uh, people, uh, I was thinking only this, uh, this thing. There are the, uh, people who got a uh, master's degree with us, I'm going to, uh, to pursue a PhD. Uh, all of who are interested to industry, they also will receive uh, enough knowledge to get a <coughs> job. Uh, because not everybody is uh, willing to do research. Some people prefer to go to industry. Uh, I, I, I'll speak again on this one. I'll to give you this example. A student of mine who graduated 2014, yesterday sent me an email and said, hey, Dr. Sirakov, I'm buying a new house. I invite you, I can show this to you. I invite you to party with me four years after he got it. What this tells you? With me, he earned enough money for yeah, 2014, now it's 2017 to buy a new house. In Makin. And he's, he's invited me. Why? Because he recognized that he got this job because of that house. He was in industry for uh, AT&T. Uh, I have uh, people with uh, of what is going on at uh, Verizon because they have also office in Dallas. Uh, I have uh, a student who got a, a job in a startup company uh, with about 60,000. Not big, not, not, not small to start it. So uh, I think this is enough to tell you how to us. Uh, enroll in our uh, uh, graduate program. You meet whoever is there. Uh, personally, for me, this is a project I work with. All these people are from Bell University Medical Center. I believe you know what is this. I work with them on a method for automatic uh, cancer classification. Now, this is another project I'm involved in. Uh, this is a project for automatic classification of weapons. I work with a team uh, from our department. Uh, no, sorry, from our school. Uh, I was uh, recently invited by, uh, uh, invited to attend a meeting convened by to present, uh, to present my work. And this meeting is only by invitation. It means people who are invited, they go. Who are not invited, don't go. Uh, ah, now, this is a project uh, uh, done by this uh, student who, who told you is UT Arlington uh, is uh, I think as the top, as the top candidate uh, in the PhD program. He got me immediately a money uh, for our project, immediately was involved in a research project. And what is this? Uh, I didn't explain, but uh, I, I'll tell you a few words about this because everybody knows. And it is easy to uh, evaluate. Now, you know, in the new cars, I have also in my car, if you, uh, if you turn to, uh, to the end here, if there is a camera, this camera can catch if something is moving there. Automatically, there is there appear uh, 
triangle of arc is beta. This is the same project we did with the student. Uh, uh, this spring to catch this are this are the moving topics in a video. This is this is work in a video. I uh, yeah maybe uh, yeah okay. This is all. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Again, uh, after this year, uh, once you start applying, you end up about me. Uh, think a little bit, check a little bit, and then fill up a little bit and submit a little bit. <coughs> thank you very much. I have a, yes, thank you. First of all, um, thank you for inviting us to be here today. And actually, I'm supposed to be the speaker today. <laughs> but uh, instead of me speaking, I decided to have my faculty to come over here to introduce. Um, I am the uh, Dr. Chang Su, uh, computer science <coughs> professor and department head. As you, uh, you, you heard, I graduated from SMU and the University of Hawaii. And I, uh, I came here at uh, the University of Commerce uh, 27 years ago, so I started teaching as a assistant professor, now serving as a department head. Um, you heard a lot of research ideas, but not this is not all. Hopefully, in the future semesters, we'll bring additional faculty members to introduce uh, our program. I just want to let you know that we are not far from here, and uh, I remember Long Beach, Texas, it was the second time here for me. I came here about 30 years ago when I had a church retreat. So I know there's a retreat center over here. I'm not sure still, you know, it's still there. So anyway, uh, I want to just give a brief introduction to our program for five minutes. I only, uh, we have bachelor's program in computer science, which was fully accredited by ABAC. You know, there was full accreditation in ABAC. Computer science, BS, and uh, computer science in uh, CIS, computer information system in BS. And then we have two master's program, one in computer science and the other one is computational science. Uh, so we have two main master's programs as well as two bachelor's <coughs> programs in computer science and CIS. Um, a lot of master's program are students with different backgrounds, not in computer science. Uh, in some people in biology, in agriculture, they come in and take a couple of um, prerequisite courses and continue on for main you know, course programs. Uh, generally, they complete their degrees in uh, one and a half years and some in two years. Uh, one of the good things we, ha uh, we have is that we have LP communications uh, about 20 minutes from our campus. Uh, they have about 7,000 7, employees over there, so we say roughly they are finished by them. Uh, placement rate is 100%. And we have 16 faculty members as well. We have, you know, uh, research ideas in gaming, and then big data, uh, iPhone programs, and software engineering, and cybersecurity. Some of our students actually got a job from NSA, National Security Agencies. Uh, so through this opportunity, I'd like to have some relations with Longview, Lutheran University, uh, hopefully to computer science, other science program as well, um, and uh, through student collaboration, we have a lot of you know, student research projects. And hopefully also if you're interested in graduate programs, uh, you can come to our campus. I brought some uh, brochures and then the pens here, so I'm going to leave it on the table so you can take it, uh, maybe visit our uh, website as well as this uh, showing. Well, I leave my business card as well so if you have any questions, uh, or you can let me know. Uh, here is your job openings. Uh, as I said, 100% job placement rate. Some of our students, even our own graduate from my university, with a background in history or biology, they change their major. They, you know, with the history bachelor's degree, they start a master's degree in computer science, and then eventually they get placed in you know, a company like Bank of America, uh, in NSA, or LP Communications, and Motorola. Apple, some of them, Apple, some of them, Microsoft, the best companies uh, they work for, work for. So, uh, so you know, and again, like I said, um, we have a lot to, uh, to collaborate with you. So, if you have interest in those, you feel free to talk to me or through Dr. Boyer. So, hopefully, we'll come back again in the next semester. So.
If you have any questions, you can ask. <laughs>